ships, planes, trucks and trains. Every year they are used to take more than 20 million consignments of radioactive material to destinations all over the world. Places where it is urgently needed. For generating power, for diagnostic and therapeutic uses in medicine, in industry, research, manufacturing, agriculture, minerals exploration and in and around our homes. Radioactive material makes our lives easier, better, safer and healthier. The movement of radioactive material has an excellent safety record. That's because of the care taken by those sending the packages, the carriers delivering them, the package recipients and the stringent regulation provided both at the global level by the International Atomic Energy Agency and nationally by member states. This is one of a series of short films produced by the IAEA about the essential aspects of the safe transport of radioactive material. It's about air transport. Most radioactive material is transported by road, some by sea. Aircraft are generally used when it's important to get a package of radioactive material from one place to another as quickly as possible. Although this may be for a number of reasons, normally it's because the radioactive material in question has what is called a short half-life. This means it decays very rapidly. Such materials, specifically those called radiopharmaceuticals, are used in medicine. This plant in South Africa is one of the few places in the world where radiopharmaceuticals are manufactured. The material concerned is molybdenum-99. This will eventually become technetium, which will be injected into patients to enable doctors to diagnose dysfunction in vital organs. Obviously, when you inject radioactive material into a person, you want that material to detect decay very quickly. Therefore, once it's produced, it begins to decay. And therefore, we need to get it to the patient extremely quickly. The only option we have is air transport. There is a long-established international supply chain to ensure the safe and reliable movement of these goods. Both passenger and cargo aircraft are used for this purpose. The goods being carried in cargo holds at approved segregation distances from passengers and crew. The carriers, like the consignors, also have their own radiological protection advisors and safety regimes. And of course, all such movements are closely controlled and fully documented. From leaving the plant to arriving in another country, in this case the United Kingdom, takes only a matter of hours. And in just a few more hours, the radio pharmaceutical has been processed and is on its way to hospitals, where it will be used as a life-saving diagnostic tool. The type of packaging used by radio pharmaceuticals reflects the relatively low levels of radioactivity that they usually emit. And like all means of transport, air is tightly controlled. It is regulated by the International Civil Aviation Organization, while other bodies like the International Air Transport Association advise on safety culture and best practice. We have international regulations which are mandatory. The IAEA regulations are not mandatory. The UN regulations are not mandatory, but the ICAO regulations are mandatory for all the airlines. Nonetheless, all guidelines, recommendations and regulations stem from the International Atomic Energy Agency's regulations for the safe transport of radioactive material. These regulations protect people, property and the environment from radiation. There are international bodies such as the International Civil Aviation Organization that adopts the regulations put forward for transport that come from the IAEA. And therefore, they put those into practice for air transport 
to make sure that these packages are transported safely in accordance with procedures and uh, regulations. To find out more about the safe transport of radioactive material, visit our website at goto.iaea.org forward slash transport safety. It's also worth looking at the nine companion films in this series. Together, they're a great introduction to the hows, whys and wherefores of the transport of these vital goods. Music